Mr. President, I say with respect to the senator from Illinois, he just authenticated an old saying, talk is cheap. This is really one of the more remarkable performances by the other side. They're talking about legislation that is vital to the welfare of the men and women who are serving in the uniform, and yet the senator from Illinois says that we shouldn't take care of them because he has another problem. That's a logic that defies anything I've observed in a long time. This is an authorization bill. It has nothing to do with the appropriations process and the money that needs to be spent or not spent depend on any kind of mechanism. The senator from Illinois and, and senator from Nevada, the, the Democrat leader, uh, keep talking about the fact that the budgetary, what passed by the Budget Committee, a majority vote here in the, in the United States Senate on the budget calls for additional funding for defense. And so, now in direct contravention to that, my friends on the other side of the aisle object to that provision in the Budget Act and will now oppose legislation that authorizes a pay raise for our troops, authorizes special, special pay and bonuses to support recruitment and retention, make health care more portable, increases access to urgent care families, knocks down bureaucratic ar ar obstacles to ensure service member maintain access to the medicines they need as they transition from active duty. There are literally tens of, if not hundreds, of provisions that take care of the men and women who are serving in our military. So what does my friends on the other side say? Turn this down because they don't like the way it's funded. The fight is on the appropriations, my friends, not on the authorization that defends this nation. And to do this kind of disservice to the men and women who are serving in uniform is a disgrace. Please don't say that you support the men and women in the military and come to this floor and say that and then vote against this legislation. Don't do it. Because any objective observer will tell you that the provisions in this bill are for the benefit of the men and women who are serving in an all-volunteer force. Uh, the, the senator from Illinois wants a, quote, better deal. I want a better deal. I'm tired of us providing funds for the military on a year-to-year -year ad hoc basis. I don't like it. I hated sequestration. I think that sequestration is doing permanent damage, or at the risk of doing permanent damage of our ability to, to face this nation at a time when there are more crises in the world than any time since World War II, when there's a flood of refugees, when the Chinese are moving in to the Spradley Islands, endangering the world's great, most important avenue of commerce, while Vladimir Putin dismembers Russia, and my colleagues from the other side of the aisle are now complaining that they didn't like the way it was funded. I'll tell you, this is a remarkable time. So apparently, that the President of the United States, which we will talk about later, who has just shown his remarkable leadership with the insertion of Russia into Syria, which he uh, did not find out from his meeting with Vladimir Putin of 90 Minutes, which his Secretary of State has said is an opportunity, which his Secretary of Defense said was, quote, unprofessional, they are now slaughtering, slaughtering men, young men, who we trained outside of Syria and sent into Syria to fight against Bashar Assad, excuse me, against ISIS and Bashar Assad, and the Russians are dropping bombs on them. An incredible situation, and there has never been, in my view, a greater need to authorize and fund our military, which is facing more challenges than since the end of World War II than today. And the, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will urge 
a no vote. We'll urge a no vote for the first time in 53 years on an overall, not a specific issue, but on a broad issue of the budget, my friends want to turn down our authorization and our responsibilities to the men and women who are serving in the military. I urge my colleagues to rethink their misguided logic here, attack the appropriations bill, let's all sit down and try to negotiate an agreement that takes care of all of these other aspects of our government, but let's not. Let's not do this to the men and women who are serving. Let's not uh, prevent us from improving their quality of life. Let's not prevent them from having a pay raise. Let's not prevent them from having the medical care that they need. Let's not do these things in the name of a budgetary fight.